And that brings us to sports. That's Let's right. uh, do something a little bit unusual here at seven. Talk Dodgers baseball, and why not? We all love him. Max Scherzer, 13 strikeouts today. The most he's had in a Dodgers uniform in his seven starts for the team. They are undefeated 7-0. and oh. Let's bring in Tim Neverett, who, along with Joe Davis, Oral Hershiser, uh, Charlie Steiner, Rick Monday, brings us the Dodgers games on radio and TV. Dodgers behind the unstoppable Max Scherzer back on winning track today in St. Louis. Unfortunately, the Giants also won, so the Dodgers uh, continue one game back. Tim, welcome. Welcome. Thank you for having me. And, you know, the, the uh, rivalry with the Giants, I think, is great. And it's going to be close as we continue to go down the stretch. I mean, they're a game out. They might tie them. They might uh, pull a game in front. But it's going to take a little bit. And they need help from other teams at this point in time. But as long as they keep winning, that's all they can do right now. Do what they did today and keep their heads down and focused and just keep trying to win. And you know, watching Max Scherzer today, he was just absolutely dynamite uh, uh, in what he did today. He's now just six strikeouts shy of 3,000 for his career, which he'll get in his next start more than likely, which I think should come Saturday against the Padres at Dodger Stadium. So anybody going to that game should see a little bit of history with Max Scherzer. Max uh, seems so intense, which is, you know, a great thing. Uh, what's he like to be around? You know, I talked to him not too long ago. Uh, he's pretty excited about being in L.A., loves the weather. And I said to him, you know, you've got to love the weather here. He goes, well, why do you think I came here? <laughs> <laughs> That's I said, to, probably to win, too. But um, he's very intense, very intense competitor. I love watching Max prepare for games when he throws his bullpen session a couple of days before his start. He throws it in full uniform. Nobody does that anymore, but he does it. Uh, players know. He is, uh, you know, such an intense competitor. You're not supposed to go near him on game day. Dave Roberts says about two hours before the game, when he sees Max put his headphones on, he just leaves him alone. He stays away oh, wow. from him at that point in time. There's really not much you can tell Max either at that point. So, But we're lucky to have him. And, uh, you know, he's just done wonderful things. Right now he's the earned run average leader after today in Major League Baseball, 2.28. So he's back in the Cy Young discussion. Well, yeah, and uh, to think that the absence of Trevor Bauer and then he steps up uh, to the mound and he's just throwing unbelievably. Uh, did, does he, is he exceeding expectations? I think so. I think there were high expectations anyway. And with what we've seen from him so far, he definitely has exceeded them. Since he's been with the Dodgers, I mean, he's barely given up a run a game. Uh, he left a little early in his last start against the Braves on Wednesday. He had a little tight hamstring issue, but he's had this many times in his career before. I think that he knows how to handle it. He does what the trainers tell him to do. He stays healthy, and he prepares himself both mentally and physically in between starts and does so at an elite level because his performance just shows that. And um, He's aggressive. Uh, he had all his pitches working today, fun to watch, and help the Dodgers get back in the win column, which – now, every time he takes the mound, everybody will expect that. So the expectations will remain high. So, Tim, you've, uh, in your career, you've, you've broadcast for different teams in different markets, including uh, the Red Sox. Um, what is your sense of the relationship between the Dodgers and their fans compared to other major league cities you've been in? Well, I think, you know, the Red Sox have a very good fan base, an excellent fan base. Uh, but... From what I've seen around baseball, there's nothing like the Dodger fan base, really. I mean, just you look at what happened in San Francisco and the thousands and thousands and thousands of Dodger fans that were up there for that series. And nobody, it's not just San Francisco. When they go to Arizona, when they go to San Diego, just hordes of Dodger fans everywhere. And it's just such a, a big following. And not just in Southern California, but around the country and around the world. I mean, you know, when I'm doing a game on radio, I'll get messages on Twitter from people who are listening in different parts of the world, Europe, Asia, uh, Australia. Uh, there are so many Dodger fans everywhere. And that's uh, it's a testament to the organization. It's a testament to their success. And their popularity is well earned. But I don't think there's any fan base like the Dodger fan base anywhere in uh, in baseball, maybe even in other. You can compare them to other sports, maybe, but uh, certainly not in baseball. 
Yeah, yeah, people uh, bleed Dodger blue. No question about that. Uh, so, Tim, you have a book. It's called COVID Curveball, an inside view of the 2020 Los Angeles Dodgers World Championship season. We're looking at the cover right there. What's a nugget that you can give us about your new book? Well, first, the, the forward by Oral Hershiser is great because he takes you inside of his mind just before throwing the final pitch of the 88 World Series and then all the chaos that ensued afterward. And then he bridges it perfectly from 88 to 2020 and how he is the World Series MVP related to Corey Seager and Clayton Kershaw and Mookie Betts and, and all the other guys. Uh, but I think that's good. But, you know, there are some neat nuggets. Like, you know, we saw what happened when the Houston Astros came in this year, how the fans reacted. What about last year when there were no fans allowed in Houston came in? What was going on in the skies above Dodger Stadium? Uh, also, my partner on radio, Rick Monday, had an interesting place that he called home. Uh, and he did it again this year uh, where he lived, uh, which was far different than how everybody else lives, I, I think, during the baseball season. Uh, you know, there's stories like that in there. What kind of wildlife would, would be there to greet us in the parking lot after road games when there was nobody at the stadium? It was completely dark. I mean, animals are coming down from the hills around Chavez Ravine. And, uh, you know, I was met by uh, a pack of coyotes one night. Another night, there was a coyote 20 yards from me uh, as I went to get in my car. And, and we never see them. Wow. We don't see, I haven't seen one this year because there's people around. But last year with no people, the animals were taken over. So these are some of the stories about what went on behind the scenes uh, and what uh, we had to go through to just put on entertainment during one of our country's toughest times to give people a, a necessary distraction last year. And that was Major League Baseball and, and the fact that the Dodgers were good and went on to win the World Series and what they had to do over and above what main, uh, Major League Baseball had mandated in order to you know, have them uh, stay healthy enough until game six of the World Series. Yeah, quite a challenge. I bet this is a very uh, interesting tale of that unique season that hopefully uh, we never have to go through again. Tim Neverett, thank you so much for your time tonight. Look forward to talking to you again. COVID curveball. Check it out. Thank you, Tim. Thank you very much. I appreciate it.